Good night, everyone. I trust you had a great day and all is well. One more time, we have gathered together to ask the Lord's blessings. He chastens and hastens his will to make known. Welcome to our fourth night in our series on becoming a mature Christian. Welcome to our visiting friends on the various platforms. We do appreciate you coming and we hope that you will be blessed tonight. Ellen G. White says in the book, Conditions of Christian Growth. One of the divine plans for growth is impartation. The Christian is to gain strength by strengthening others. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. Proverbs 11 verse 25. This is not merely a promise. It is a divine law, a law by which God designs that the streams of benevolence, like the waters of the great deep, shall be kept in constant circulation, continually flowing back to their source in the fulfilling of this law is the secret of spiritual growth. If we come to God in faith, he will receive us and give us strength to climb upward to perfection. If we watch every word and action that we may do nothing to dishonor the one who has trusted us. If we improve every opportunity granted us, we shall grow into the full stature of men and women in Christ. Let us pray. Father, and everyone, I want to thank you for your love and many blessings. One more time, Heavenly Father, you have taken us through another day. You have provided for us. You have given us journey in mercy. We come, Heavenly Father, before you one more time because we are unworthy and we are undone. We come so that we can be filled. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you will wash us and cleanse us from sin, guilty, stain, so that as we listen to your words, it will take lodgment into our hearts. Lord, we thank you for taking each and every one home safely. We thank you for providing dinner for us. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we worship you now, may your worship may not be in vain, but may we worship you in spirit and in truth. Be with each and every one who has joined this program tonight. We tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. To continue with our worship, the Old Road Music Department will do for us the song service. Good night, everyone. Our first song will be in number six, O oh, Worship the Lord. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before me, his glory proclaim. We call the obedience and incense of loneliness. Kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Low at his feet, lay thy burden of carefulness. I am this heart, he will bear it for thee. Come for thy sorrow and answer thy prayerfulness. Guide in thy, thy step as the best for thee be. Fear not to enter it courts in thy slenderness. All the power thou was reckoned as thine, truth in his beauty and love in his tenderness. These are thy offerings to lay at his sheen. These, these are we bring them in trembling and fearfulness. We will accept for his name that is said. Morning of joy and evening of tearfulness. Just for our trembling and hope for our fear. Our next in movie in number eight. We gather together. We gather together to wax the Lord's blessings. He's testing and hasten his will to make known the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing sing praises to his name he forget not his own 
Decided to guide us, our God, with us joining. Our daily mention in his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we are winning, the Lord was at our side. Oh, glory be thine. We all do exalt thee, the only the triumphant, and pray that our will or defend our will be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation, thy name be ever praised, O oh Lord. Make us free. Our final song is in number 88. I sing the mighty power of God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountain rise, that spread the flowing seeds about and bid the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom better than the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at its command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his words and then pronounced them good. Lord, all thy wonders are displayed wherever I turn my eyes. If I survey, the granite red or gaze upon the sky. There's not a plant or flower below, but makes that glory known. And clattering the tempest bow by order from thy throne. Creatures that borrows life from thee are subject to thy care. There's not a place. Where we can live, but God is present there. Amen. 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 So at this time, I'm going to ask you to put your prayer request in the chat because prayer moves mountain. Prayer is powerful and prayer changes everything. So we are going to listen to a prayer song at this time, after which Sister Shandrika K will give us our first prayer. Then Sister Rikoya Cooper will do for us our scripture reading. And Sister Shauna Una McPherson will come and do for us the second prayer. So put your prayer request in the chat so that as they come and pray, prayer changes everything. Someone is praying for you. Someone is praying for you. So when it seems you're all alone and your heart will break into Crowds around you gather in the midst of the storm. Is your ship tossed and battered? Are you weary and worn? Don't lose hope. Someone's praying for you this very day, and peace be still. It's already on the way. Someone is praying for you. Someone is praying for you. So when it's 
Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Most kind, loving, compassionate Father, the I am that I am. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The conquering line of the tribe of Judah. My savior, my creator, my redeemer, my restorer. My all in all, your people again come. As I stand in the gap, I pray, my God, that I be not be seen. That you'll take away self, every Father, and you will remind me every minute of every second of this prayer that I am nothing before an awesome God. I am dust, I am vapor, I am nothing. I am nothing, my God, but yes, still you bid me to come because of your loving kindness. So I pray, my God, that you hide me behind the rocky cross. You hide me behind the righteousness of my Savior. Dip me under the blood once again, my God, and I shall be righteous. Heavenly God, as I come before you this moment, I humbly and boldly come. With hearts bowed and knees bowed, my God, I pray that you will have mercy upon us. That you will have mercy upon us, my God. We are not worthy. We don't deserve to even come before you. Because our life demands death. Our sinful nature demands death. We don't deserve anything good, my God, but because of your love for us. We are here. And we plead, my God, for your mercy. We plead this moment, my God, for your mercies. We pray, dear God, that you will encamp it round about us with the armies of heaven. We pray, my God, for the Holy Spirit to lead us, to direct us, to order every, every step of what, every thought that we make, every word that we speak, every action that we do. We pray, my God, that you grant us the Holy Spirit to lead us and direct us. Heavenly Father, your people are coming. Your people are here before you. We pray, dear God, that as you see in the chat, Heavenly Father, and the unspoken word that were spoken of, of need of you, we pray, my God, that your presence, your presence, my God, will visit us even now wherever we are. Wherever we are, Heavenly Father, those who are at home and those who are at work and those who are on their way home to work, on their way home from work and those who will be listening later. We pray, my God, that your presence will be with us. We pray, my God, that you will grant us the strength, grant us a double portion, my God, of your strength to resist the enemy in any shape or form he may come. We pray, my God, that you build up a standard against that old dragon. Help us, my God, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Be for us, my God, what we cannot be for ourselves. Heavenly Father, we pray, my God, that you will not turn away your face from us, but you will draw nigh unto us. You will give an ear unto our supplications. Heavenly Father, help us, my God. Cleanse us of anything and everything that is not of you, was not sent by you. Everything that might hinder, my God, your prayers from coming up unto you like sweet smelling incense. Anything, my God, that might hinder, my God, your presence from tabernacling with us today. Have thine own sweet way, my God, have thine own sweet way. I pray for the sick in Zion right now. I pray, my God, that you speak the word, my God, because your word is sufficient. Your words, my God, are truth and your words are life. You are still, my God, the healer. You are still, my God, the restorer. You are still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And what you say you will do, my God, we can rest assured that you will do, and you are doing it even now. Heavenly Father, take control of the family the family of the church, my God. Heavenly Father, we pray for the family of Zion, my God. We pray for the family of the church. We lift up all the world family before you, my God. Be with us in a marked way. 
be with us in a marked way, my God. Let us live life of living example of your love, of your character. Help us, my God. Creating us, my God, a clean heart and restore unto us a righteous spirit, my God. We pray for nothing else at this moment as a character as yours we need. Heavenly Father, we pray for the link with members. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will touch them even now. Remove the veil from their eyes, Heavenly Father. Help them to know it is not the time, my God, to be out of the vessel. The time is now to be on the solid rock. If the time is no, because the enemy is out like a roaring lion. And if they are not on the solid rock, my God, they have no peace. They have no security. They have no resting place. Heavenly Father, help us in the church. Help us in the church to be light unto them, to be light unto the community, to be light in this darkened world, my God, because you send us out to be light. Help us to live a life, my God, worthy to draw others unto you. Heavenly Father, be with us in a special way. Surround the young people, my God, with your armies of heaven. Surround the young people, guard their minds, strengthen their minds against the attack of the enemy. Because the enemy is very busy, my God, and without you, we are lost. Without you, we cannot do nothing. Without you, my God, we will fail and the enemy will win. So we pray, my God, that you set that devil right again right now. You you put him in his place. You confuse him on our behalf. You rebuke him on our behalf. Help us, Heavenly Father. Help us. Help us, my God. Help us, Heavenly Father. We need you more than we have ever need you before. Help us to take away self from us and to seek you minutely, daily, hourly, secondly, because without you, my God, we are nothing, and we can do nothing. Without you, my God, we are nothing. We are nothing, my God. Help us to remember that without you, we are nothing, and we can do nothing of our own selves. Have mercy upon us, my God. Have mercy. Reviving us, my God, a desire for you, a love for you. Take us back, my God, to where we first believe. Help us, my God, to have a personal relationship with you. So no matter what the enemy throws at us, we will stand firm in just say the Lord. We will stand firm in knowing that your love is sufficient and you are the God that spoke everything into being. You are the God that went to Calvary and you are still the same God today. So no matter what the enemy does unto us, help us to be rest assured in that fact that you change is not you change is not my god cover us under your blood heavenly father wash us anew grant us your faith to stand no matter all the storm may blow my god no matter all the storm may blow build our leaders of the church Build them in a special way help them to lead your people according to your will according to your will my god have mercy upon us again, I pray. Have mercy upon us again, I pray, my God, because we are nothing. We are nothing, my God, we are nothing. The very breath in our nostrils belongs to you. The very breath in our nostrils belongs to you. We are here this moment because of your say-so. We are here this moment because of your say-so, my God. Have mercy upon us, my Savior. Have mercy upon us, my God, and take full control of us. Thank you again, my God, for your many mercies. Thank you again, my God, for your many blessings. Thank you again, my, my God, for your grace that is sufficient. Thank you, my God, for your long suffering, your forgiveness, your love, for Calvary, for Jesus. Thank you again, my God. Whatever I feel in asking my Savior, Please do not fail in granting unto us according to your righteousness sake. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Our scripture reading is taken from Ephesians 4, 
verse 11 to 16, and it reads, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slay the light of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. 16 and last, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Here in the portion of God's holy word, we honor it by saying amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before you. Lord, we come and we ask that you may cleanse us. If we have done anything wrong today, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we bow before you. We are thankful that you would have spared our lives to see the, the ending of another day. Mighty God, so many things could have happened to us today. For those of us who are traveling, mighty God, we could have had an accident. Anything could have happened, but we are grateful that we are alive. We are a thankful, mighty God, that mercy lingers. And we just want to praise you and we want to big you up, mighty God. Thank you for coming through for us today holy father thank you for the battles that you fought that we did not even see we just want to thank you for who you are and we just worship you and we say thank you daddy jesus thank you that you are still in control thank you that you are still large thank you that you still protect holy father and that mighty god you still come for it lord as i come to this tonight i come to place your people before you Holy Father, I ask that you remember each and every person who is logged on tonight from whatever platform. Mighty God, you know our struggles. You know what worries us, mighty God. You know the moments in our lives that we just want to give in and we want to give up. But mighty God, we, are, we come before you boldly because you know what to do with burdens. You know what to do with challenges, Holy Father. And so we come to you in confidence, knowing you know how to deliver us, mighty God. And you know how to strengthen us as we go through our trying times. Heavenly Father, I want to bring to your attention our prayer, the prayer request of your people, mighty God. We ask that you will remember Elder Sosha Palm, oh God, remember all the members who used to walk with you are not walking with you anymore. Mighty God, you know all that is happening more than us. So we ask that you will intervene and that they may remember their first love before it's eternally too late. Lord, I want to place the young people before you, especially the young people of our Lord, mighty God. We have some strong women strong young women who are standing up for you mighty god who are giving up their best lord we ask that you may cover them under your blood remember the young men too we ask that you may cover them under your blood holy father we ask that you may manifest yourself in their lives holy father Help them that they may always remember that there's a God who they can run to. There's a God who cares even though sometimes it seems like mighty God when we are in trials and troubles that you don't care but help us to remember that you cares and you are working it out mighty god and it's we they should just trust you lord remember tyrese lee and family remember sean coke and the us family holy father remember the birds holy father we ask that you may comfort your people lord those of us who need to come out of our comfort zone to 
serve you in spirit and in truth, mighty God. Do what you must to save us, we pray. We ask that you may equip us with strength and wisdom, mighty God, as we go through our trying times. And help us to always remember, mighty God, that all things work together for good for those who trust you. Help us to believe your words, mighty God. Help us to internalize it. Help us to personalize it, Holy Father, so that when the trials of this life come, we will call out to you and to believe in you. Heavenly Father, I place your man servant before you. We ask that you may anoint him once more, oh Father, and that you will anoint him from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. If that whatever words may come from his mouth, mighty God may come directly from the throne of grace. We ask that the, the words that come tonight, mighty God, may burn sins out of our lives and we may also be assured that King Jesus still reigns. Thank you for who you are and whatever failing mighty God provide for us. Lord, you are the God of providence. You are a sovereign God. You know all things. So we ask mighty God that you will hear and answer even the words that are not spoken. In Jesus name, amen. Amen. Let me thank each and everyone for participating in our worship service tonight. From Sunday night until now, we have sat and we have listened to the message of hope, a message of deliverance, a message of growth from God's man's servant. I give to you one more time, Pastor Damian Chambers, God's mouthpiece, God's humble servant who proclaims, thus saith the Lord. Tonight is no exception, brethren. He is here with us. He is here willing and ready to lift up the name of Jesus, willing and ready to give the trumpet a certain sound. The group Shaz will give us a special song. Then we listen to our theme song, Growing in Jesus. Then God's mouthpiece, Pastor Damian Chambers, will come and give us a word tonight. Crossroads of faith and deepest fear. So afraid of failing if you move on from here. The road ahead is steep, but you're not giving up because God's about to take you to a brand new place of trust. Take a step of faith. what God will do There's victory ahead That mountain's not too high Friend, hold on Cause you're about to climb Higher heights awaits you Beyond what you have dreamed And there you're for the taking, if you dare to believe, so leave it down behind and let God make you pray. Cause He has gone before you, He already made a way. Take a step of faith, it's time to move. Lay Watch what God will do. There's victory ahead. That mountain's not too high. Friend, hold on. Cause you're about to climb. You may see the can't go on. It just seems too hard. But put your hand in this. He will take you to the Step of 
Growing in Jesus. Are you growing in Jesus? Please make sure you're growing in Christ. Let me say a good evening to my brothers and sisters on this platform, those of you who are on Zoom. Greetings, first Elder Palmer and Pastor Loans. Greetings to the artist family and to the Williams, to the Turners. Bonner, and to all of you, the Benz family. And thank you, Sister Bird, for your kind words of introduction. Greetings to the Cooper's family and to Key. So this evening we have a, our fourth presentation. And we're talking about, since Sunday evening, we've been talking about on becoming a mature Christian. We spoke to you about how important growth is we spoke to you about how growth spiritual maturity is measured by our character by our faith and tonight we're going to talk about maturity and understanding let us pray gracious father as we open up your words one more time open our hearts to receive them give us understanding we pray in jesus name Amen. Good evening to those of you joining on YouTube and those on Facebook as well. Let me ask uh, those of you who have been with us from Sunday night until now, can you raise your hand? Those who are on Zoom, uh, if you're on Facebook, maybe you want to let me know, say yes, you have been with, with us from Sunday night. You have listened to each of the presentations. Okay, I'm seeing some hands going up. Thank you. So I want to ask you, are you... Are you following? Thank you, Harris on YouTube for responding. Are you following? Do you understand where I've been going? And have you been able to follow um, the messages each evening? That's the question I'm asking. I just want to know um, to make sure that I'm not, um, I'm being followed. Okay, very good. Thank you for that feedback. So we said to you, that love is a goal of your character development. At the end, when God is done with us, we must look like him, we must behave like him. As First John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3 says that, nor are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. Ellen White tells us that Christ is waiting with longing desire for his character to be perfectly reproduced in us. But we also said that if you're going to be molded and fashioned after his likeness, you must stay in the workshop. You must abide in him. You must remain connected with him. And we remain connected with him by faith that even when we go through the worst circumstance, like Job, we're going to hold on to him. And in the end, we will reflect his glory. Tonight, we're going to talk about one other aspect. The final aspect of our lives by which spiritual maturity is measured. And that is our understanding. And I want to explain understanding by saying, let me use the word knowledge. 
our knowledge of God? Do we know him? Do we understand him? And I want you to know that the more you understand God, the more you are able to put your faith in him. And the more you put your faith in him, the more you will obey him. So you're going to realize, actually, that spiritual life begins with our understanding. Okay? Spiritual life begins with our understanding of God. If we don't understand him, we won't be able to put our faith in him. And that is why, if you notice, in evangelism, in the work of evangelism, the preacher, the gospel worker, first seeks to engage the person's understanding. We first seek to teach the word of God because we are hoping that as we teach the word of God, people will understand. And the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing, which is understanding, and hearing by the word of God. But there are many who hear the word, but as the Bible says that just like a seed that fell by the wayside, it does not take any root in their heart. They do not understand it. And so when we come to Christ, it would have meant that the word of God would have awakened our understanding. We behold his glory and we put our faith in him and begin a relationship with him. So, so understanding, my brother and sisters, refer to our ability to see the things of God. It refers to our ability to perceive things from God's perspective. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And that is because his understanding is darkened. He doesn't know God and that's why he hates God. And that's why Jesus was able to say, Father, forgive them. For they really don't know what they do. They don't understand. And the Bible has much to say about the people who do not understand. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 4 to 6, the Bible referred to those as being in darkness or having blindness of mind or hardness of heart. It says in 2 Corinthians 4 that if our gospel is hidden, the good news, the wonderful news of the gospel, if it is hidden, it is hidden from those who are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded their minds so that they can see the gospel. My brother and sisters, if you can see God, you must rejoice. If you know God, you must count it to be a privilege to know him. If you understand God, you must see it as something very meaningful because there are people in this world who are in darkness. There are people in this world who do not know God. So it is a privilege to know him. And so we must pause to rejoice and to praise God for the opportunity to know him because guess what? The only way we could have known God is through the working of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12, I think, and verse 3, the Bible says that we can't, I think First Corinthians chapter, either chapter 12 or 11, one of them, we can't even say that Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Spirit. So it is the Holy Spirit that awakens our understanding so we can see the things of God. And Jesus appeals to this when he said, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, or he who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Because Jesus knew that when he spoke the word of God, some would understand and some would understand. But he said, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and blessed are your ears, for they hear what the word of God has to say. Okay? 
No. Let me let me um, illustrate what it means for the Christian, for the believer. Because if you notice in the story of the disciples, Jesus did not only have a problem with them with how they behave, because they were being very selfish. Jesus did not only have a problem with their lack of faith. They, they were not consistent in believing what God says. But Jesus had a problem with their slowness of heart and their lack of ability to understand. And that's why he was able to say to them at one point, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them. No, your understanding has not developed enough for me to tell you the thing that I want to tell you. You have to grow. You have to continue to grow into maturity. And when you lack understanding, when a believer lack understanding, they are like children who do not understand. For example, when a child, when you're a child, you used to complain about going to school. Am I correct? You used to complain about washing the dishes. You used to complain about getting up early in the morning. You used to complain about doing your duties every day. Why? Because you don't understand. <laughs> How do I know that? Because when you got understanding, you get up out of the bed yourself. Who tell you to go? And, as an adult now, who tell you to go and wash the plate? Who tell you to go and get to work early? You, the reason you do that is because you know, understand the value of work. You understand the value of duty. And you're now self-motivated. And the same thing happens in the spiritual life. The reason we complain about trials, the reason we complain about problems is because we don't understand what God is doing. <laughs> the reason we worry and complain about the difficulties that are in the way, it is because we don't understand. But if we saw things from God's perspective like Job, if we were able to to trust God that all things work together for good to them that love God. And as the author of Hebrews says, that God chastens those whom he loves. God would not allow you to suffer temptation unless he had something brilliant to bring out of you. And that's why the Apostle James says, if you had the right perspective, my brothers and sisters, you would count it all joy when you enter into manifold temptation because the trial of your faith works patience and it is in your own best interest that you should go through those trials. When we understand things, from God's perspective, we complain that we should keep the Sabbath. <laughs> we complain that we should be obedient to the commandments. We complain that we should, we are, we are, we are too restricted. You know, we, we want to have girlfriend here and girlfriend here. We want to have relationship here and there. When, when we don't understand things from God's perspective, we more are inclined to go to the edge of the cliff than to walk circumspectly because of a lack of understanding of the things of God. And I want you to, I, I, I want to give you some perspective by showing you this slide here. I put all of them together. You see, love, brothers and sisters, is the result of holding on to God. It is, it is the fruit of the spirit. It is the end product of God's work in our lives. Faith keeps us connected with God so that God can continue his work in us. 
It is understanding that gives us reason to keep holding on. It is our understanding of God that gives us reason for our faith. It is because Job understood God why Job kept holding on even in the midst of the worst situations. And I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, the opposite, and I, I, I'm, I'm giving you this, it's another way for you to understand what I'm trying to say. So the opposite of love is selfishness. The opposite of love is what? It is selfishness and pride and worldliness. The opposite of faith is what? What's the opposite of faith? The opposite of faith is unbelief or fear. Okay? The opposite of faith is unbelief. Very good. Thank you. The opposite of understanding is false doctrines, false teachings. And you don't realize it. You don't realize it, therefore, my brother and sister, is that in order for Satan to shake our faith, he must first shake our understanding. And that is why the, the greatest strategy of the devil is to insert thoughts in our head. <laughs> the greatest strategy that the devil has against us is to insert thoughts that counteract the word of God. He makes suggestions that undermine the principles of God's word in our hearts. And once he can get us to undermine the word of God, then he undermine our faith and then undermine our obedience. So this is where this is the crux of the matter. <laughs> you know, it, if you thought love was the crux of them, yeah, that is right, Sister Archer. That is why he attacked Eve from the mind to undermine God's word. Once he could get her to undermine God's word, he knew. He destroyed faith and therefore destroyed obedience. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, not only is it important for us to grow in understanding, it's important to guard the avenues of the soul, to guard the mind concerning what we feed on, concerning what we fill the mind with, concerning what we believe my brothers and sisters, because this is where the devil messes us up. This is where the devil messes us up. You know, if, if, if you, I, I found this interesting parallel, as I do this presentation, my brothers and sisters, I found this interesting parable, parallel, parallel with a thing that we have been talking about from Sunday night, from, from Monday night. Look at Revelation chapter 3. And verses 14 to 21. And I want you to look at the things that, that Jesus told Laodicea that she needs. What did Jesus tell Laodicea? He says, buy of me what? What did he say must buy of him? Buy of him gold tried in fire. White raiment that you might be clothed. And I serve that you might be able to see. So this is what Jesus wants Laodicea to have. Gold of faith that is tried in fire. Even when you go through temptations and trials, you remain connected with God. He wants the right raiment represents the character of Jesus Christ. And the I serve representing discernment. So you can see that this is in connection. And, and, and the Apostle Paul is telling us in two places that when our understanding is shallow, we are going to be like a wind 
like, like a reed that blows in the wind. With every wind of doctrine that blows, we are to, <laughs> to and fro. But we're not sure what we believe. Here's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4. We read it earlier. It says, he gave some apostles and, and, and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Listen to this carefully now. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sin of, sin of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in way to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is ahead, even Christ. Let me share something with you, brothers and sisters. Some of us feel that as Seventh-day Adventists, we know and believe the doctrines of the church and of the Bible. Some of us feel that because we are, we are members of a church. It means that we know and believe and we're sure of what we believe. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see the wind named COVID-19? <laughs> you see the breeze named pandemic? That breeze, you see, it shows that some of us are not firm. That wind that blew, some of us were, were we were, we were, we were carried about. <laughs> we were carried about. I, I, I literally sat down and watched. Even some of my colleagues as pastors, I'm not ashamed to say, some of us were blowing with the wind. We thought we were firm. We thought we were in the church. We thought we believed the 28 fundamental beliefs. But COVID-19 show us that anything that can be shaken, it will be shaken. One of my good friends, <laughs> I tell you, I've told a story before. When I, I tell you, I've, I've listened. I've seen it, brethren. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. And God, that was a little, that, that was what Jeremiah called the footmen. Let me tell you something, COVID-19 was a little wind. But really, it is among what J Jeremiah called the footmen. And Jeremiah says, God said to Jeremiah, if you can't run with the footmen, what's going to happen? When the horsemen come. If you can't run when you have a little water, what, what's going to happen when Jordan overflow? So my brothers and sisters, our understanding needs to be strengthened. Our understanding of the doctrines of the Bible need to be firm. That's that when the winds blow, we are not being tossed to and fro in our minds about the truth. How do we grow in understanding? How we, what, what, what do we need to do? Here's what the Apostle Paul says. You see, there are some doctrines in the Bible that the Apostle Paul referred to as first principles. Here's what he accused the, 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 the church, the Hebrew church of. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It's on the screen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Here's what Paul says. He says, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as need of milk and not of strong meat. You know what the Apostle Paul is saying? The Apostle Paul is saying that there are some of us in the church for years and we're still feeding on milk. There are some of us in the church for years. And we cannot handle hard food. We still have to feed on milk. Do you know what milk is? Milk, my brother and sisters, is what 
Paul referred to as the first principles of the oracles of God. And he listed some of the doctrines about the resurrection and about the forgiveness of sins. Paul is saying, these are things that you should have been sure of already. These are things that the Seventh-day Adventist church referred to as fundamental beliefs. Fundamental beliefs. You should not be uncertain about any of these doctrines. Your mind should be settled in the truth, brothers and sisters, and then you're growing up on top of that foundation. But some of us for years, we have not laid a good foundation. Do you know why? <laughs> Let me ask you a question if you believe. Just, just a few of these doctrines that I put on the screen here. But let me, let, me, let, me show you, let me show you why some of us are not ready. Let me show you why some of us are not ready. We believe that there is a God. Am I correct? Yes, we believe that there is a God. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in salvation. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And, and, and through his name, repentance and forgiveness of sins is being preached in all the world. But sometimes... When we make mistakes, when we fall into temptation, we find it hard to believe that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We find it hard to believe and so we feel that there's something we need to do to, to, to appease God and to come back to God and to make ourselves worthy before God. But God says, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. But some of us, we claim to believe the fundamental beliefs. We, we find it hard to believe that. Let me give you another one. We believe that when you die, you're going to the grave, whether you're wicked or you're, right, or you're righteous. You're going to the grave to fall asleep, awaiting the resurrection. You believe that, right? It's called the doctrine of the state of the dead. But some of us, when our loved one die, we go to this graveside and we throw things into the coffin. We come home and we turn on the bed. We tie a red string on the baby. And we put her shoe on the door. And we claim so we believe the fundamental teachings of the Bible. What you have is a cognitive dissonance between what you profess and what you actually carry out. And so my brothers and sisters, we have work to do. We have a work to do to solidify ourselves and to firm up ourselves in the doctrines of the Bible. And in order for us to do that, in order for us to do that, as I wrap this up, there are two things that we need to do. Number one, we need to overcome all the lies and deceptions of Satan. You know, if you think that it is impossible for you to be in the church and to be deceived, Check what the apostle Peter said. Peter said that if you're a believer and you are not growing, you're not adding to your faith, Peter says that you are blind. You are partially blind and cannot see afar off. You're not as blind as a man out in the world, but you're blind enough to be deceived. And that's a worse type of deception. Peter says, it better you never know the way of righteousness. That is a dangerous position to be in. When you think you are okay, but you're believing lies. You believe the lies of Satan and the COVID-19 exposed some of us and the lies that we believe. We've been believing and don't even know it. The second thing that we need to do, my brother and sisters, is that we need to work on growing our understanding. And there are several things that, that I want to point to you as to how we can do that. 
Number one is that we need to study God's word daily. And I'm talking from experience, brother and sister. When I say study God's word daily, it is even possible when you are deceived to be reading God's word every day and not understanding it. Because pride can fill up our hearts so much that rather than going to the word of God to listen to what he says, we go there to tell the word of God what to say. And I'm talking from experience, President. I remember my own experience, even as a minister, I had to go to God and sit with him as a baby and say, God, I'm going to take my Bible again. And I'm going to read from starting from the book of Genesis. And God, this time I am going to listen. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling my personal testimony. My brother says, the, the book that I've written on becoming a mature Christian is my own testimony. I said, I said, God, this time I'm going to listen to what you have to say. God, I don't know anything. Please tell me what to know. Because Eve thought she knew. Eve thought she knew. But lo and behold, she was deceived by the arc enemy. My brother and sister, the devil has 6,000 years and more of, 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 of craftiness. And our only safety is to go like children to the word of God and ask God, what is he saying? And I tell you from that day until now, my life has never been the same. I listen, I, even today, when I, in, tomorrow morning when I go to the Bible, I say, God, I am here. I don't know anything. Teach me and help me to understand. And as I read the word of God, I'm asking, what is it saying to me? And I say, okay, that's what it's saying. And I write it down. For you to grow in understanding, you need to read God's word like a child. That's why Jesus said, if you don't humble yourself and become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of God. A child is someone who listens. But some of us, we have become so proud and think we know everything that not even God can teach us. The second thing is that we, as we listen, we need to obey. <laughs> we need to do what God says. Yes, just do it. <laughs> just do it. Jesus says, the man who is going to know of the doctrine is the man who do what I say, who is willing to do it. Walk in the light, he says, lest it becomes darkness to you. Walk while it is day, lest it becomes darkness. Obey what the Lord says. And that's why um, Paul said in Hebrews chapter 5, again, he says that, that, that heart, that, that strong meat, belong to those who, by reason of exercise, have sharpened their ability to discern, to discern between wrong and right. Number three, for you to grow in understanding, you need to trust God in trials. <laughs> it is as you trust God in trials, my brothers and sisters, every trial will deepen our understanding of God. And draw us closer to him. It's just like a marriage relationship. Every conflict you overcome, your relationship with each other goes deeper. The same thing with God. Every trial, every temptation that you overcome, your understanding of God is growing. Number four, you need to testify to others about God. Some people refer to it as witnessing. It is as you tell others about God that the Holy Spirit inspires your mind and deepens your capacity to know him and you grow in understanding. And number five, you need to listen to what other people say about God <laughs> because you won't know everything. You won't know everything 
from your own experience. So there are people with wisdom that you need to get. There are people who know God and the insight that they get from knowing God will help you in your journey and will help you to understand God better. So read books and go to church and listen to sermons and you understand God more. So tonight, my brother and sisters, we have learned that not only should we grow in our behavior, not only should we grow in our faith, but we need to grow in our understanding of the things of God. Grow, don't just, don't just say the church have written a book called 28 Fundamental Beliefs. It is on your shelf, but it doesn't mean that it is in your heart. The way to get it in your heart is by studying God's word daily, feeding on his word, obeying his word, listening to his word, and testify to others about his word. And you will grow in understanding. And the more you understand God, the more you will trust him. And the more you trust him, the more you will obey. And that's how you become a mature Christian. God bless you. Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for your presence with us this evening. Thank you for your word and for the ministry of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with us in a very special way and help us, Lord, to take heed to your words, to spend time studying your words and, and getting to know you so that you can barricade us against the deceptions and temptations of, and craftiness of Satan that we, our understanding will not be undermined and our faith will not be undermined and our obedience to you will not be undermined. Bless us, Lord, and grant us these things. Those who are on YouTube, those who are on Facebook, those who are on Zoom, grant and hear our prayers and the cry of our hearts in response to this word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me thank the Lord for using his manservant so ably. Thank you, Pastor Chambers, for sharing with us. Indeed, it was a blessing. We need understanding, and understanding gives us the reason to keep holding on. You see, brethren, the devil wants to put things in our minds, but we must know the word of God for ourselves. We must guard our minds, guarded with the word of God. Do we want understanding? or we want to be tossed to and fro with any kind of doctrine. Brethren and friend, let us hold fast unto God so that we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken and we will be strong and firm in God's words. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing with us tonight. In times like these, we need a savior. And in times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. I hope and pray that you all were blessed. By ways of information, the book on becoming a mature Christian will be on sale Sabbath evening. That's after Vesper, and the cost is $1,500. Please let Elder Palmer know if you are interested in it. Come on, our brethren, and support the venture. Remember that tomorrow night we won't have any meeting. You will join us again on Sabbath in church or those who can't make it in person in church. You can join us on our various platforms on Zoom, on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you, everyone, for coming and sharing with us. Let me ask all the deaconate body to stay back for a meeting after we dismiss. Good night, everyone. Do enjoy the rest of your night. Take
Turn. 